Raditz clicks the side button on his scouter as he has done so hundreds, no, thousands of times before. It was instinct at this point. The machine would pinpoint the exact location of his brother, Kakarot. The last time he saw him, Kakarot was just a newborn. According to his mother, Gine, he had been sent off to a far-off planet named Earth on a mission. A month after he got that call, his father, mother, and nearly every Saiyan perished as a meteor struck that planet. He was considered one of the lucky survivors, taken in by Frieza and his men. He was expected to be thankful, to pay his dues. He had tried to do that but deep down he hated it. He hated owing his life to another. He wasn't vocal about it, but his commander, the fearsome King Vegeta, freely spoke his mind, even to his superiors. He didn't like Frieza, he made that apparent, but Frieza didn't care. It seemed like he had a special liking for the prince, almost as if he was an amusing pet. Raditz kept that to himself though. That was always Raditz's role in life, to stay quiet, to serve his overlord, and to listen to Vegeta. It had been a long time since he ventured by himself. He had almost forgotten what it was like to be alone with his thoughts and to not have that oaf, Nappa, commenting on every little thing. The scouter bleeped positively as it detected a strong power level, 322. Well, not that strong. Kakarot was a low-class warrior, but that was just pathetic. Raditz quickly headed towards the signature, surprised to find that it was in fact not a Saiyan. It wasn't even a human, it was a Namekian. That made more sense, Namekians were stronger than humans, but he didn't belong here. The green man didn't take kindly to the disturbance, demanding to know who he was. Raditz chuckled. He could kill him in a single blow here, but why not have some fun? Raditz kneeled down to the soil, placing a single bean on it that quickly sprouted into a small green bean. <laughs> Careful, they're even more vicious than they look. What? What are they? With a warning, the Cyberman sprinted towards Piccolo with speeds the Namekian had never seen before. He barely managed to move out of the way to dodge an attack. It was obvious that this was a mindless creature, attacking with little care or technique. Piccolo could do little more than avoid attacks as much as he could, striking whenever there was an opening. Thanks to his cunning, Piccolo was able to damage the Cyberman somewhat, gaining special advantage when he realized that neither Raditz nor the creature could detect them, as he used After Image to disappear and catch his breath. Raditz was getting tired of it, yelling at the Cyberman to stop playing and kill him. The Cyberman was desperate and was willing to risk it all to win. In the last ditch effort, he jumped towards Piccolo with his claws out, but Piccolo once again used this after image, only this time it was right in front of Raditz. The Cyberman latched onto his master as Piccolo took the chance to charge in with a kick against the Cyberman and Raditz, but as he zoomed towards them, his eyes widened. A giant powerful explosion emanated from the Cyberman's body, hurling the Saiyan and the Namekian to opposite ends. Piccolo was severely injured, though he was just far away enough to not be killed. Piccolo could barely stand as he watched bits of the Cyberman dispersed all over the battleground, leaving nothing but a crater and Raditz's twitching unconscious body. Piccolo approached carefully, sensing that his key was depleting rapidly. That explosion would have killed him if he was only a few inches closer. This man was incredibly strong. Piccolo didn't have the strength to finish him off, nor could he wait there for his power to replenish and risk the Saiyan waking up. He had to retreat and recuperate. Piccolo could only hope that the Saiyan would die from his wounds. As soon as he healed himself, he'd go find Goku and tell him about the Saiyan. Perhaps together, they could defeat him. For Raditz, there was nothing but emptiness. It was quiet. Where was he? Who was he? Slowly, things began to come into view. He saw the figure of a man. He recognized as his father. His back turned to him. But slowly, things came into view, but they were blurry. He knew his name was Raditz, and he remembered his parents, Gine and Bardock, but that was it. Where was he from? Why was he there? It was scary. As he drifted through darkness, a light awoke him. Huh? Where am I? Having hit his head, Raditz's memories were lost, his mission forgotten. He began to wander the Earth. As he speeds away, he realizes that, though he cannot remember much, he does remember some abilities. He can fly, he can blast. But why? What were these skills used for? His scouter bleeped again, signaling a power nearby. This device was strange to Raditz, but whatever he came here for, it must be pointing him towards his goal. Perhaps he would find answers there. Meanwhile, at a remote island, Son Goku enjoyed a happy reunion with his old friends, Roshi, Boma, and Krillin. They were surprised to see that the Earth's once greatest champion was a father now to a kid named after his grandfather, Son Gohan. The celebration seemed to be off to a good start when Goku jolted back. There was an immense power coming towards them. Raditz, realizing that the scouter was pointing him to a house, quickly lands at the beach. Was this his home? Sad. He had hoped that he'd have a cooler place. 
He must be very eccentric. What? Father? Huh? Father? You mean Goku? Krillin, who had just found out about Gohan, couldn't believe that Goku had another kid, especially one who seemed older than he was. Did he adopt one? As he was about to comment on this, the bald man heard a scream coming from behind. Bulma had been startled by the sudden appearance of an old enemy, Piccolo. So, you're still alive. <laughs> Piccolo! Piccolo, having recovered from the battles against the Saiyans, arrived to warn Goku about his impending arrival. Clearly, he had been too late. The only way to defeat him now was if they all teamed up and ensured he would not cause any more trouble to Earth. But as Piccolo began to explain his previous altercation, Raditz interrupted. <laughs> Help me! Stop, Piccolo! He's too weak to fight you! See? He's scared! Piccolo, assuming that Goku had in fact been in league with this tailed freak, resorted to activating his battle stance. It would be difficult to battle both, but he couldn't pass up a rematch against Goku. <laughs> Fools, have it your way. I'll just have to fight you instead! With that, the air around them crackled with energy. Goku took a defensive stance, ready to protect Raditz, while Piccolo's fingers began to dance in intricate patterns. Goku's movements were fluid, his strikes were focused and fierce. Raditz, still shaken by his memory loss, watched in awe as Goku defended him. Despite his fear, he felt an inexplicable sense of trust towards the Saiyan who stood his ground. Krillin even grabbed him and dragged him inside Kame House for safety. Piccolo, however, was relentless. Endless. He unleashed a barrage of energy blasts, forcing Goku to remain on the defensive. Explosions rocked the island as Goku deflected the attacks. With a burst of speed, Goku closed the gap between them and delivered a thunderous blow at Piccolo's abdomen. The Namekian staggered back, momentarily stunned by the unexpected force. Who was the man he was defending? But Piccolo was not one to be underestimated. Gathering his strength, he unleashed a blast, catching Goku off guard. He wanted to use the technique he'd been developing to use against Goku, but that man was way too fast. He wouldn't have time to charge it up. The impact sent Goku hurling backwards, crashing into the sand. Raditz, witnessing Goku's determination and bravery, was inspired. His fear began to wane, replaced by a sense of duty. Krillin tried to yell at him to get back into the house, but Raditz was determined. Goku saw the fire in those eyes. If he wanted to help, then so be it. Goku looked at Piccolo, rushed behind him, and kicked him towards the home while charging up a Kamehameha. Raditz, almost as of instinct, charged up a purple key ball in the palm of his hand. Man. And this Saturday sure did crush, he thought to himself. As Piccolo was about to reach the Saiyan, Piccolo spun in midair to blast the Raditz, unaware of the incoming Kamehameha from behind. Piccolo was blasted as Raditz unleashed his own beam. Piccolo was crushed in the middle, falling to the floor. As the smoke cleared, Piccolo realizes that he's being stared down by Raditz, Krillin, and Goku. Piccolo wasn't stupid, he knew when he'd been defeated. The wounded Piccolo had no options but to retreat. You'll pay for this, Goku. I'll kill you! The Namekian speeds off, as Goku's face turns from one of serious determination to a smile. He turns to the stranger. Hey, are you okay? Don't worry, I'll get him back someday. Bartok? Hey, Goku. I think he's lost his memory. There was a solemn silence. Who was this man? Why was he so strong? And why did he think Goku was his father? Bulma and the others turned to look at Goku for guidance, but his goofy smile never wavered. Oh well. We'll let him rest a bit. It'll come back to him sooner or later. Oh man, laid back as usual. Raditz couldn't stop staring at Goku. He did look like his father, but there was something off. There was a lack of anger in those eyes, only excitement. Even so, Raditz was in no position to say no. He needed to rest, and he needed food. Thankfully, Bulma had packed food for everyone in capsules, and the celebrations resumed. It was a feast like Raditz had never seen before, or at least couldn't remember seeing. The Z crew asked him many questions, with only having a couple of answers. He knew his name, Raditz, and he knew his parents. When Krillin pointed out his tail, Raditz was confused about why they didn't have any. The rest turned to Goku once more, remembering his childhood tale. Perhaps their connection was deeper than anticipated. As the night wore down, Roshi tasked Goku with taking care of the man. If their tale links them together, then it's probably best he stays with them. Raditz looked down at the young kid Gohan, but he simply hid behind his father, afraid of the large man. 
Raditz forced a smile, being taken aback by the realization that Gohan too had a tail. He tried to laugh with the boy about this, but he was painfully shy. Goku called down the flying Nimbus, ready to return home, and invited Raditz to come along too, only to have him fall right through it. Raditz was confused, as Goku explained that only the pure of heart could write it. Bulma and Krillin tried to console the man by saying not to worry. They all have perverted thoughts from time to time. Bulma did Goku a solid though, and took Raditz home, after making him promise not to try anything funny, even if he was her type. Chi Chi wasn't exactly the biggest fan of having a random homeless man in her home, but Goku explained that it was only temporary. After seeing his tail, she asked if he was Goku's brother or something, which Goku laughed at. That night, Raditz had the first good night's sleep in a decade, even if he didn't know it. The next day, Goku woke up first thing in the morning to do what he does best, train. After having some delicious Poutsu cooking, Goku convinced Chi Chi to let him take Gohan out to gather some supplies, alongside Raditz. But secretly, he hoped that watching him and Raditz train might spark up something within the child. The Saiyans clashed overhead, as Goku told Raditz that he's incredibly powerful and his technique could be great, but he lacks discipline. And he's kind of a coward. He's scared of everything, he's scared of fighting him, but Goku promised that he's not gonna hurt him. It seemed like sensing Ki wasn't something he was very familiar with. Perhaps that could be one of the first things they work on together. Gohan was in awe. He'd never seen anyone fight the way they did. Raditz was even giving his father a hard time. This went on for a few days, with Gohan finally joining in during some sessions. Just the basics, nothing that would make Chi Chi worry. Gohan was crazy strong though when he put his mind to it, or when he got angry. There were times where he actually worried Raditz would severely hurt his father, to which he actually defended him, and sometimes even hurt Raditz a little bit. But Raditz took it in stride. That was actually kind of fun. He chuckled as he fired purple blasts at Goku down below, which Goku struggled to push back to such a degree that he had to spin and punch it out of the way, and allow the blast to fire off into a mountain, exploding it into smithereens. Goku gulped. If he hadn't been there to redirect the attack, then Earth would surely be in trouble. They had a lot to work on. Unbelievable! Why do I have such power? <laughs> I guess the next time a bad guy comes along, you'll be able to take care of yourself. <laughs> you think so? That day, after a long sparring session, Goku, Raditz, and Gohan had a picnic with some packed lunch Chi Chi made for them. There really is nothing like Pao cooking, Raditz commented, as he placed his scouter on the picnic cloth. For some reason, he always felt naked without it, though Goku told him to stop relying on it. Raditz began to ask questions about his new home. What was up with the talking turtle? Why don't the others have tails? Who was the green guy? Do they have Disney Plus? Goku realized that it was probably about time he told Gohan and Raditz about his past adventures. He explained everything. The seven magic dragon balls that grant any wish, his quest to stop the Red Ribbon Army, the death of Krillin at the hands of Piccolo and his men, the way the dragon balls were restored, reviving Krillin and the others, and his training with Kami. Finally, he told them about his victory over Piccolo Jr. and how he really wasn't as bad of a guy as his father was. That's when a thunderous voice was heard from behind. This time I'm gonna finish you off! A cold sweat dropped down Raditz's right spine. He's back! Don't let him scare you! You can take him! You're not a weakling anymore, remember? Weakling. 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 That's right! I'm Raditz! And I'm no weakling! His aura pushing Goku and Gohan back his entire mass crushing the Namekian against the rock formation before being dragged down to the water. Piccolo tried to recover, exploding his energy to push Raditz off, vaporizing the water around him as he extended his arms, pulling Raditz back to him and slamming his head against the enemies. Piccolo opened his mouth to fire a mouth beam at close range, but to his surprise, Raditz did the same. The mouth beams exploded in the middle, severely damaging both fighters, but more so Piccolo. Raditz didn't have the scouter on, he was blinded, as Piccolo used his key sensing to his advantage. From the crater, multiple Piccolo clones rushed forward, but Raditz handled them with ease. However, Goku noticed something was wrong. Piccolo was no fool, that technique cut his power. What was his plan? Piccolo's clones seemed to slowly lead Raditz somewhere, as they finally met in the middle, uniting again with the main Piccolo. Goku yelled at him to dodge out of the way, but it was almost too late. As Raditz turned around to look at the Saiyan, a piercing pain burst through his arm. Sorry to keep you waiting. Makan Kozapo! 
Raditz's arm was nearly obliterated, as he held it in pain. If it hadn't been for Goku, he would certainly be dead. Piccolo cursed. He was sure he had gotten him. He would just have to try again. Once more, Piccolo's clones appeared, but this time Raditz knew the trick. Goku yelled from the sidelines to sense, not see. Raditz took a deep breath, and to Piccolo's surprise, dodged all of the attacks, ignored all the clones, and found the original. Powered by sheer anger, Raditz burst to Piccolo and kneed him in the stomach, launching him up to the sky, and fired a one handed blast at the Namekian. The rest of the clones faded back into Piccolo as he laid on the ground unconscious. Incredible! I did it! I did it, Kakarot! I won! Yeah, but my name's Goku, though. Right. Time to finish this. Raditz took slow steps towards Piccolo's body, an immense lust for blood washing over him, the sound of his own blood dripping to the ground from his arm, being a reminder that yes, this Namekian had to die for his insolence. That's enough, Raditz! He's learned his lesson. But it's kill or be killed! Goku stepped up to the Saiyan, locking eyes with him, shrouded by deep disappointment. Is that what you really think? If you act like that, you're no better than he is. Raditz saw a flash before his eyes, as Goku stared him down, an image of a man with a scar on his cheek, a man he once looked up to. Raditz looked away. What had come over him? He was no killer, was he? You're... you're right. It's as you say, Goku. I shouldn't abuse my power. Goku's look turned back into his typical goofy smile, placing a hand on his friend's shoulder as Gohan moved in front of his line of sight and smiled at him. Goku promised Raditz that they continued to work out some other time. There was still much he had to teach him. Plus, he wanted to get to his level too. Goku, Raditz, and Gohan began to fly away, but Raditz couldn't help but look back at Piccolo, who had now stood up. His eyes were piercing, and it was as if he knew something Raditz himself didn't know. Without a word, Piccolo turned back and disappearing, leaving Raditz wondering if he'd ever see him again. Thus, more months passed by. It had been nearly a year since Raditz arrived on Earth, and he had become accustomed to it. Goku had allowed Raditz to live at Grandpa Gohan's old home until Bulma could find him a place to live. He'd taken great liking to the world, and that mountain. He would often explore, sometimes with Gohan, sometimes by himself. It was peaceful. That was until he found something that bothered him. Deep in the forest, while trying to find a meal, he discovered a patch of land that had been destroyed long ago by an object, a white space pod of some kind. At first, he didn't think anything of it, but he continued to revisit it over and over again. It looked so familiar to him. Should he tell Bulma? She knew what it was. But all it did was make him angry. He would get flashes of various things, horns, giant monkeys, and the same scarred face man and a prince. He couldn't piece it together, but all it did was make him angry. That night, he had another dream, a scarred faced man. He told him to pick himself up, that he's not a weakling, but it soon changed into a nightmare. That face changing into Nappas, Vegeta's, Frieza's, beating him to a pulp, telling him to stay down. This recurring nightmare felt like his only connection to his past life. He would go on to have that nightmare several more times, never knowing who those people were, except for his father, Bardock the only one telling him that he's not a weakling. The following day, as Raditz sat outside by the fire, little Gohan came running up by the mountain, enthusiastically. The two had agreed to train and catch fish together, as well as find some bugs, while Goku and Chi Chi were grocery shopping. Raditz smiled brightly at Gohan, whom he'd come to care about very much. The two had an interest in insects, one of the few things he could remember about his past life. Once long ago, he enjoyed that sort of thing, and Gohan taught him a lot about it. Raditz's tail flapped in the wind, as did Gohan's. With a bright smile, Gohan said, you have a yeah, guess so. Yeah, so I heard that my dad used to have one too. We're like the same. Gohan's laugh echoed in his mind, taking him back to a different place. One where his mother's laugh sounded just like that. One where his brother... Kakarot. Also, uh, 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 it reminds me of something. Hey, are you okay? Raditz quickly snapped out of it, his vision slowly becoming clear again. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, time to train, Gohan. Gohan looked at Raditz nervously. He was imposing as his tail wrapped around his waist. Raditz stood up, signaling for Gohan to come along. Right. On the mountainside, Gohan and Raditz bowed at each other, one of the many things Goku had taught the both of them. This signified the start of an honorable fight, though Gohan was more interested in the bugs they'd catch later on. This was admittedly pretty fun too. Raditz initiated the spar, throwing a casual punch at Gohan. Gohan countered with a series of quick jabs and kicks, 
but Raditz parried each move with surprising agility. Gohan's eyes widened as he realized his mentor was holding back immense power. As the spar intensified, Raditz unleashed a rapid flurry of punches, forcing Gohan to block and dodge. Gohan's youthful energy fueled his determination, and he launched a powerful energy blast, which Raditz effortlessly deflected with his palm. The force of the explosion sent shockwaves through the landscape, but they just continued the battle untethered. Gohan then realized that Raditz started slowly going hard at Adam, but Gohan's true power remained dormant until a fierce blow pushed Gohan into a wall. Raditz was unrelenting. Finally, Gohan's dormant strength exploded, the wall of rock behind him crumbling and surprising the Saiyan. His body crackled with electrifying energy as he darted towards Raditz, delivering a series of lightning-fast kicks and punches. Raditz was momentarily stunned by Gohan's newfound power, but he wasn't about to give up. Gohan screamed out a thunderous roar, a roar that reminded Raditz of something. The red flash in those eyes, the power he held. Gohan unleashed a devastating energy wave, but the Saiyan warrior smirked, countering the attack with his own energy sphere. The two collided, shaking the ground beneath them. Smoke and debris filled the air, obscuring their vision. When the dust settled, it was clear that this time Gohan's power had prevailed. That power boost was incredible. As Raditz laid on the ground, somewhat wounded, he began to have more and more flashes. As Gohan approached his fallen mentor, something inexplicable happened. Raditz's Saiyan instinct, long suppressed, awakened in a surge of raw power. With a fierce battle cry, Raditz rose to his feet, his eyes blazing with primal fury. He delivered a crushing punch to Gohan's chest, sending the young warrior flying backwards. The force of the blow left Gohan gasping for air, struggling to remain in composure. Raditz was back to his senses though, and he stared down at Gohan with regret in his eyes. He never meant to hurt the boy, but something had taken control of him in the heat of battle. He quickly descended and kneeled by his young friend. To Raditz's surprise, the kid stood back up. He really was tougher than he looked, but his mother would certainly kill Raditz now. After all, she was the only person Goku feared. What unimaginable power could she be hiding? Uh, no! Are you alright, Gohan? What? Uh, I'm sorry. I just... I'm okay. I'm used to training pretty hard with my dad, so... <laughs> but the roar of Gohan continued to echo in the mind of Raditz, spiraling throughout the sound. He'd heard that before. It was the roar of an Ozaru. Suddenly, his heart skipped a beat, his eyes jolted open as he saw more of what he'd forgotten. A red planet, its people, being sent out to kill others. Vegeta and Nappa, their tails, a full moon. They were... Remember now, Kakarot, I, you, we are all... Saiyans. What's wrong? Raditz bolted up his fist by his side, clenching so hard that blood began to drip. He remembered now. He remembered everything. He knows what he has to do. He knows what he needs to do. I am the Saiyan, Raditz. Raditz turned away from Gohan. He couldn't look at him in the eyes, but he had a mission to accomplish. If this planet had to die, then it had to die. The mere idea of that hurt him to the core. Without turning back, Raditz told Gohan to call Nimbus and go home. There's something he needs to do. Raditz speeds off, leaving Gohan confused and concerned. Raditz, in the meantime, went back to Grandpa Gohan's home. He sat alone, contemplating what he'd just remembered. Those memories were real, but so were the past few months, the past year. But he couldn't just ignore his mission. He had to return to his squad. He walked outside, back to where he had found the mysterious pod. He knew now what it was. Kakarot's spaceship. No doubt, his brother's life changed because of where he landed. The man whose house he resided in now, Grandpa Gohan. It was his fault, Goku. No. Kakarot had failed his mission. Raditz closed his eyes tightly, blasting at the space spot. The light of the attack consumed the area. Now Raditz stood on the crater. He had to go see Kakarot. Now, in the early morning, while Goku trained outside, Raditz landed, announcing that they needed to talk. Goku could tell that something was deeply wrong. Gohan had come home hurt. What was that about? Did Piccolo attack them? Goku and Raditz departed further away from home. He could smell Chi-Chi cooking inside. He loved that smell, but at that moment, it just made him nauseous. Taking a deep breath, Raditz explained it all. They were brothers, Kakarot and Raditz, two of the last remaining Saiyan warriors in the universe. Their mission was to pillage and conquer worlds for their overlord, Frieza. Earth was just one of the many planets in a long list of fallen worlds. Now, it was their duty to do just that. They had wasted far too much time. So you're my brother, and I'm one of these Saiyans, like you. But I'd rather die than kill innocent people and try to rule the world. 
Raditz expected this, but it still hurt. However, he had convinced himself that this was what he needed to do. With a sullen voice, he spoke. So, you're not going to do as you're told. In that case, you leave me no choice. I, what are you saying? In an instant, Raditz appeared before his brother, kneeing him in his stomach and making him stumble back. But Goku was much stronger than when he first arrived, and they had learned a lot from each other. This wasn't going to be an easy battle. Raditz wasted no time, lunging at Goku with blinding speed, fists crackling with energy. Goku met the assault head-on, blocking Raditz's powerful punches and kicks. As the battle raged on, Raditz's attacks grew more ruthless. He unleashed a barrage of energy blasts, forcing Goku to weave and dodge with unparalleled energy. Goku continued with his own attacks, but Raditz deflected them effortlessly, the energy dissipating into the sky. With a swift kick to the abdomen, Raditz sent Goku soaring to the sky. He recovered, but Raditz pursued. In a final desperate bid to stop his brother, Goku fired a Kamehameha at Raditz. It hit its mark, sending Raditz to the ground, causing an explosion down below. Goku landed, hoping that his brother would come to his senses, but just then, Raditz appeared and slammed Goku to the ground, holding him by the neck. Just as it seemed that Raditz would deliver the final blow, Goku had nowhere to run. He couldn't escape the grasp, but just when it seemed as if Raditz would deliver the final blow, he hesitated. Conflicted emotions washed over him, and he couldn't bring himself to strike down his own flesh and blood. Goku's eyes were locked onto Raditz. The evil Saiyan's palm had stopped mere centimeters away from Goku's face, but Raditz simply dropped his hand. Why? I am a Saiyan! One of the strongest warriors in the universe! Goku could see the pain behind those eyes. But, but you don't have to be evil. Just look at... Look at Gohan and me! Raditz closed his eyes, as if looking at Goku was way too painful. <coughs> Shut up! There's nothing to be gained by killing people! You should understand that by now! Raditz's eyes bolted open again, his pain replaced by anger. The eternal struggle was killing him inside, his pride put into question. I am a Saiyan! I will not give up my pride so easily! Raditz slapped Goku away and blasted off into the sky disappearing. Goku, extremely hurt, managed to dig himself out from under the rubble he'd been slapped into. But Raditz was certainly strong enough to kill him. He would have done it by now if he wanted to. It was clear that he cared for his brother. For Earth, even. Goku needed to do something. He had to save Earth. And hopefully, save his brother. But he couldn't do it alone. He'd have to get some help from old friends. And perhaps, enemies. Rain poured down on Raditz as he placed the hand on his space bot. Even in just a few months, it was already being covered by moss, almost as if reflecting his soul. The Saiyan ship was becoming one with Earth, and he hated that. The door flung open, with Raditz sitting inside. In peace, the controls still worked. The communication system, too. That's when he realized something. His scouter had been destroyed during his last battle against Piccolo. But Vegeta and Nappa had tried to deliver a message. In one year's time, they would come to Earth for those so-called Dragon Ball. Raditz has become accustomed to Earth, seeing it as his new home. But the more he trains with them, the more memories have returned. Now the Saiyan recalls his mission, and warns Kakarot that if he doesn't join him, then Earth will be destroyed. After a small altercation against his brother, Raditz retreated to his Saiyan pod, contemplating just what he is about to do. That's when he saw on his spot screen a message from Prince Vegeta. They had listened to his conversations prior to his scouter being destroyed and now him and Nappa were on their way to take over the planet. Raditz no longer had a say on the matter. Earth was doomed. Or was it? It was only a matter of time until they arrived. Raditz's soul was now being torn apart. He had come to love this planet, but it was only because he lost his memories. Vegeta, Nappa, the Frieza Force, that was where he belonged. Not amongst these weaklings. It was all Kakarot's fault. If it wasn't for him, then he wouldn't have had to endure all of this. This peace, this quiet. No Saiyan was fit for such a lifestyle. It had been a gift and a curse. The pod's image display shone brightly on the Saiyan's face, his eyes locked deeply with the message shown. He knew what would come next. Raditz stayed in the pod, contemplating his next move. Would he join forces with his Saiyan comrades and pillage the world for all its resources? Handing over this place, which had effectively become a new home to him, over to Lord Frieza, he clicked off the image display and fell asleep.
The following morning, after having recovered from his injuries, thanks to sensu beans from Master Corin, he wasn't sure if facing his brother again would be the right move. But it was the only thing he could do in a situation like this. Goku waved at Chi Chi as he jumped on the Nimbus, locating the second strongest key on the planet, Piccolo. The Saiyan arrived before the Namekian, accompanied by Krillin and Gohan. Chi Chi wasn't happy about Gohan coming along, but Goku insisted. If there was a way to bring him back, then Gohan could do it. But he promised her that he wouldn't be put in harm's ways. Piccolo wasn't thrilled about Kakarot finding him, even if his new techniques were nearly ready to be displayed. He came with the bald man Piccolo had fought at the World Tournament. Were they there to kill him? Goku denied this. Instead, he came here with a proposition. Raditz had already been stronger than them both before, and after training with Goku and Gohan, his power, technique, and martial arts prowess had reached unimaginable levels. Goku was not up to par, yet. So he would need Piccolo's help to stop the damnation of Earth. Piccolo was going to refuse at first, but realized that this was his chance at revenge. Perhaps his only chance. On one hand, he could stand back and watch as Goku was killed by his own brother. And on the other, he could join his old adversary and finally defeat a man that caused him so much humiliation. He waited his options. If Raditz wins, then there will be no Earth for him to turn into his demonic kingdom. Piccolo accepted. With this unlikely alliance in place, the Dragon Team rushed over to Raditz's power. Raditz's eyes opened. They were on their way. He could sense it. It was strange being able to read people's presence without a scouter. He didn't think it was possible, but he had to admit it. It was nice not having half of his face red all the time. As the Dragon Team made their way to him, Raditz looked up, hand filled with key, aiming at the sky. Beneath him was a small city, now on fire. He had begun to carry out his mission, however even he could tell that his heart was not in it. If he put his mind into it, half the world would be destroyed by now. Not just a measly city. People ran and screamed beneath him. This brought him little joy. It was just the mission. Then he heard the humming of the flying Nimbus, a humming he had become far too familiar with. Sensing the key of his brother, the sane invader simply lifted his arm up to the sky and fired a key blast. Goku cursed. He had to be careful. This would be harder than he thought if he was already aiming to kill. Nimbus twirled around the blast, but not before Krillin fell from it as he was just holding on to Goku. Krillin landed safely on his face, while the others descended. Raditz crossed his arms with a forced smile. Gohan gulped, afraid of being in this city, while Krillin helped some civilians along the way. There was malice in Raditz's eyes, but Gohan could tell. There was no satisfaction in what he had to do next. There you are. This time I'm gonna beat you, and then nothing will stand between me and Goku. You just don't give up. Raditz, if it's come to this, we have no choice but to stop you. I hate the idea, but I'll team up with them if it means beating you. Even if you are Goku's brother, we can't let you take over the Earth! Fine. Come on, then. Show me what you've got! Piccolo was the first one to attack, fueled by the humiliation brought upon him. He wasn't going to let this Saiyan get away, not this time. But even with this massive amount of improvements, it seemed like Raditz was now even stronger than ever. His memories having returned also meant the return of several of his Saiyan techniques, which they were all unfamiliar with. Piccolo was doing better than the last time, but Goku continued to yell at him that they need to work together, otherwise they don't stand a chance. Goku rushed in, leading the charge. He unleashed a Kamehameha, while Piccolo fired a barrage of energy blasts, creating a smokescreen that obscured Raditz's vision. Raditz dodged most of the attacks, but some graced him, causing minor injuries. Gohan, though he was instructed not to get in trouble, had to take this chance to attack. Krillin watched him move over the smoke and followed suit. The two jumped up to the sky and fired a pair of key blasts, which surprised Raditz, destroying a part of his armor as he was forced to jump back. Part of Raditz was angered by this, but he realized realized he was also proud. Gohan was doing better than ever before, becoming a true Saiyan warrior. But these thoughts proved to be a distraction, as Goku and Piccolo zoomed through the smoke and pummeled Raditz with swift punches and kicks, overwhelming him. Raditz cursed, and now he was in trouble. He can't be thinking about stupid things like that. In response, Raditz countered with a double Sunday, creating two massive energy waves that forced the Z fighters to scatter. Goku and Piccolo managed to dodge the attack, but Krillin took a direct hit, leaving him severely 
severely wounded. The city continued to suffer, with the heroes unable to lead Raditz away from it. But Goku realized that Raditz hesitated against his nephew. It was a good call keeping Gohan around. Piccolo asked Goku to buy him some time as he began to charge his special beam cannon. But Raditz had seen that attack before, and he wasn't about to let it hit him. He moved in and out of the way of Krillin and Goku's attacks, finally arriving right before Piccolo, lifting his arm up to unleash a powerful blow. But just as he did this, Raditz was surprised by the anger in the eyes of the young Gohan, who zoomed before his uncle with his arms spread. He was defending the Namekian? Raditz caught himself, unable to bring himself to slash down at his own blood. This proved to be a mistake, however, as he then heard Piccolo move his arm back. Raditz's eyes widened as he tried to move out of the way, but it was too late. The special beam cannon pierced through his shoulder, rendering the arm completely useless and going off to destroy several buildings nearby. Raditz was pushed into a wall, grabbing his arm in pain as he struggled to stand up. That would have killed him if he was only slightly further up. Without an arm, this battle would be a lot harder. Piccolo thanked Gohan, but pushed him out of the way as he continued towards Raditz, before being stopped by Goku. Goku told Piccolo that he was clearly done. They didn't have to kill him. Piccolo argued otherwise. He could simply recover and kill them all off. He had to make sure he didn't miss like the last one. But as Raditz heard his brother protect him from what would be sure death, he took a chance to charge his key into his usable arm, appeared behind Goku and Piccolo, and unleashed all that power. Both Goku and Piccolo were left extremely hurt in a crater in the middle of the city, with a Namekian cursing Goku's name. But Goku ignored it. This was truly painful for him. Yeah, it was fun to fight someone strong, but this was his brother. Someone he had come to care deeply about. Someone Gohan looked up to. If he hadn't lost his memories, would he have to kill him? Was this always the ultimate destiny of the fateful brothers? As Piccolo struggled to stand back up, he looked up to find Raditz standing over him, staring him down. Raditz was now heavily injured, but the Z Fighters, despite their numbers, were in an even worse shape. Goku had two sensu beans left from what Korin gave him. If he took one, he may have a chance to win. As he contemplated this, Raditz smirked at Piccolo. He could kill him. He could win. But he continued to hear the words of his little brother in his mind. That killing wasn't the way. That killing Piccolo would be a waste. <laughs> it's just that there's no point in taking your worthless life. <laughs> Sounds like hanging around Goku's made you soft. If this is the best you have to offer, you won't stand a chance against them. Against who? Raditz spits on the floor, saying that it doesn't matter now, that this was always going to be the Earth's fate. He recalled back to when his mother told him about Kakarot being sent to Earth. Why hadn't Kakarot gone ahead with his mission? What delayed Earth's demise for so long? Whoever that Grandpa Gohan guy was had saved the planet unknowingly. As Raditz contemplated this, Goku rushed behind his brother, grabbing him by the tail. Goku recalled his old weakness from when he was a child, and held on to it tight. He begged Raditz to give up up to join them once more. Raditz fell to his knees, his power being zapped away. He hadn't felt something like this in a long time. His father had pulled that trick on him when he was young. He knew he should have worked on his tail training, but there was no time for regrets now. He needed to do something. Accept your fate, Raditz! Piccolo yelled at Goku to just kill the man, and Goku yelled back for Piccolo to shut up. This continued, with Piccolo saying that if he won't do it, then he will. Piccolo pushed himself forward, with Goku finally letting go of Raditz to stop Piccolo. But Raditz quickly stood back up, throwing a punch at the exact same time the other two did. It was a triangle of punches, Goku throwing one at Raditz and Piccolo, Piccolo throwing at Raditz and Goku, Raditz throwing one at Piccolo and Goku. It was a stalemate as blood dripped from their mouths. Piccolo was the least damaged one, but Raditz was still the strongest. Only one of them would come out alive. That's when they felt an extreme heat surge nearby. Krillin yelled at Gohan to get back. Gohan's hair flared up with the wind as it spiraled around him alongside his aura. Gohan's key was rising extremely fast, electricity surging. He screamed out to stop fighting. He spread out his arms and like a lightning bolt striking down, burst forward through all three of them. They were sent into different directions breaking apart the fighting in one fell swoop, and seemingly defeating all three 
For a second, Goku's vision was blurry, but he was able to look up to see Gohan on the ground, clearly unconscious. He tried to crawl his way to his son, but his power was quickly failing him. That's when he turned his head to watch as Krillin continued to fight, throwing Kamehamehas and punches and everything he could at Raditz. But the Saiyan, with whatever little energy he had left, slapped the human away as he took steps to Gohan. Goku couldn't believe it as he continued to yell and curse at Raditz, smoke surrounding the area while his brother bent down to grab Gohan by the tail. What? Raditz turned his head and said that if Kakarot won't join him, then perhaps Gohan will. Raditz was limping, clearly one foot in the grave already, but he had enough power to take off with his son. Goku realized he had teardrops on his cheeks as he begged for Krillin's help. Piccolo groaned nearby, struggling to get up. Krillin hurried by his friend's side. Even in this terrible hour where he had been pummeled by the Saiyan, he mustered up the courage to run to his aid. Goku begged Krillin to reach into his pocket, as Goku had no power left to even do that. A pair of sensu beans. Krillin was about to give it to him when Goku told him to stop and to break it in half instead. Krillin was confused but did as told. Goku told him to split the second bean as well and distribute it between Krillin and Piccolo. The bald man fed the first half to Goku who instantly shot up to his feet, muscles swelling up, rushing with adrenaline and power. It was strange. Krillin had never seen Goku like this. It wasn't just fury in his eyes. It was a deep pain. But above that, a strange power that had a Woken within him, as if being hurt had only made him stronger. Without any other words, Goku called down Nimbus and followed Raditz's key. It was time to end things once and for all. Meanwhile, Raditz holds on to Gohan tightly, looking around for somewhere to land, blood dripping from him and onto the ocean. Finally, he spots a small island, the site of his last battle against Piccolo, with a tree sitting in the middle. He just needed somewhere to rest, to collect his thoughts. The Saiyan quickly landed trying to catch his breath as he gently set Gohan down. Raditz sat back against the tree, hiding his key, which was depleting rapidly. He couldn't help but smile while looking at Gohan. That kid had given the three of them quite a lot of damage and completely stopped the fight. <laughs> They've improved quite a bit. Raditz simply held his own arm and leaned back comfortably against the tree. A small butterfly landed on a tree branch by him, and Raditz stared at it. The two of them had gone out to find bugs before. It was a fun activity, and Raditz ended up learning a lot about earthling insects thanks to Gohan. He could remember the insects of planet Vegeta, catching them, messing with them, hearing his mother's call that food was ready, getting told that he had a new mission coming up, one with Prince Vegeta. What an honor, he thought to himself at the time. That was the last time he saw his Mother, and it had been even longer since he had heard from his father. Bardock had always been a better Saiyan than him, better than most. What would he have done in this situation? Gohan finally woke up, his vision coming into view. The first thing he sees is Raditz, red grass surrounding him from his blood. Gohan moved to him and asked if he was okay. What happened? Raditz chuckled. So, the kid doesn't remember. He doesn't know his true powers still. Raditz can't look at Gohan in the eyes, but Gohan grabs his hand softly. Raditz is surprised, turning his head to to look at the young kid, a single tear falling from his cheek. The kid looked at him no different than he did prior to his memories returning. It was clear that Gohan still cared deeply about his friend, someone whom he had gotten a lot stronger with. He had gone from a friend to a mentor to an uncle, and now Raditz was betraying that trust. Uncle Raditz, why do you have to be so mean? You're not a bad guy. I know you're not. Raditz could only picture his mother as he looked at Gohan. That single tear falling from his face, it reminded him of the way his mother would look when either he or his father would have to go on missions. She was never one for fighting, though she was in his father's squad for a time. His father would always end up badly hurt, and his mother would have to nurse him back to health. Bardock loved it, and Guinea was proud, but there was always a worry in the back of her head that she wouldn't see him again. To her solace, at least his father had been on planet Vegeta with her when she died as far as Raditz knew. <laughs> because I'm a Saiyan, this is punishment for our sins. Raditz understood that now. He was doomed to love this world he swore to destroy, the people he was going to kill, the brother he once lost. And this young boy, 
the future of the Saiyan race, his own blood. Ironic. Whatever physical pain he felt was nothing in comparison to the storm brewing in his heart. The sound of boots landing made Raditz turn his head, now staring at Kakarot, a Saiyan who had just grown even further. He couldn't believe his power, but Raditz, even in the face of this immense danger, as Goku stared him down with righteous anger and worry for his son's well-being, couldn't help but smile at his brother. He was a true saint. Despite his clothes, his humanity, his name, he could sense that he had grown from a near-death experience. That strange power only Saiyans possessed. He was a true Saiyan. Darn you! You're not getting away this time! Gohan looked at his father, as the younger brother realized that even after everything that happened, even after having to attack Raditz, his son wasn't afraid of him. Even so, Raditz lets go of Gohan's hand and slowly stood up and puts up his defenses. He was determined to fight until the very end. Gohan's hand was left stained with his uncle's blood as the butterfly flew away from the tree branch. Come on, Kakarot! Goku pitied his brother, even giving him one last chance to leave them alone. But Raditz refused. A Saiyan dies a warrior's death. That's all he has lived for and all he will ever know. Goku was disappointed by this answer and got into a battle stance himself. Raditz stood little chance, but no matter what Goku threw at him, Raditz simply got back up. Nothing but adrenaline fueling him. Even in his dying moments, Raditz's attacks hit him with unimaginable power. Raditz wanted to give him his all if this was really going to be his final battle. He used everything he had learned from every person he learned it from. A rebellion spear from Bardock, a rapid fire energy blast from Vegeta. This was the culmination of years and years of adventures, conquering and more. But above all, he used Goku's own moves and techniques against him. Reading Ki was vital to this battle. Even so, there could only be one winner. Goku had already proven to have risen above Raditz, surpassing his older brother in more ways than one. At times, Goku didn't look like Kakarot. Clearly, he had learned just as much from his brother as Raditz had learned from him. Perhaps he could take on the other Saiyans after all, but he shouldn't have to. It's his fault they are coming to Earth. Kakarot lived peacefully before he met him. In a last-ditch attempt to defeat his brother, Kakarot rose up to the sky, charging a Kamehameha as Raditz pulled back his arms, creating a weakened blast that would have surely killed him in one shot less than a year ago. The attacks clashed, weaving back and forth in a battle for dominance. Gohan watched closely, hoping both of them would come out okay from this terrible battle. Finally, Goku screamed out, the power he gained from the Zenkai boost overwhelming Raditz and consuming him. His earthling clothes nearly destroyed as he landed close to a tree, with Gohan running by his side. Goku panted and lowered himself slowly until reaching his brother. He grabbed his hand, just as he had done with Gohan before. But it was clear that the final attack meant the end. Raditz couldn't move his head to even look at Kakarot. His brother helped him up, sitting against the tree once more. His breaths were heavy, and he was quickly losing consciousness. <coughs> well done, Kakarot. Raditz! I used to think power was everything, but I see now. I didn't know what true strength was. Caring for the weak and fighting to protect something. That is true strength, isn't it, Kakarot? Wait, you mean... The butterfly that had landed on the tree branch before flapped its wings onto the tip of Raditz's finger. The Saiyan could barely shift his eyes to look at it. He wanted to ask Gohan what the creature was called, but the words could not be mustered. Raditz's eyes slowly defocused, and his hand dropped from Goku's. Gohan had tears streaming down his face. As he faded, Raditz began to recall the warm memories of the time spent with Goku and his friends, just as Krillin and Piccolo arrived. Raditz could no longer hear them. But his consciousness was not gone yet. The recurring dream about his father returned one last time. The familiar location, the outskirts of a Saiyan village, with a castle in the background overlooking it. There, he stood alone and slowly began to walk. He looked around this familiar village, a distant memory and a forgotten culture. In the distance, a man stood, a Saiyan with a familiar hairstyle and a tail around his waist. Raditz recognized him instantly. Father. I'm not qualified to be a Saiyan anymore. They're going to call me a low-class warrior. A weakling. Again. 
The man turned around slowly. To Raditz, he was there, really there, a physical being. He hadn't seen his father like this ever since he was young. He wondered what he thought of him now. Would he be seen as a true Saiyan? Had he been weak by allowing himself to care for Kakarot? I don't care. You're still my son. Father... I miss you. Bardock placed a hand on his shoulder. Raditz focused in on his father. He really did look like Kakarot. If he's seeing him again like this, then surely he's passing on, right? He failed his Saiyan mission, and he failed his brother. Even if he did survive, then he'd have to come face to face with Vegeta and Nappa again. He would have no option but to destroy Earth alongside them, to say goodbye to his family forever. But Bardock spoke once more. As a gift, you may have a match with me. Come, Raditz! Raditz's eyes lit up with wonder, as we look back to see he is now a young boy once more. The city around him was now populated with Saiyans, including his mother, watching from the doorway of their home. As if he had returned to a simpler time, but Bardock was not holding back. Every strike was just as powerful as Raditz remembered. The battle continued, with Raditz changing into his adolescence, blasting at his father, tanking attacks, growing stronger and stronger. He is actually able to stand up to his father, showing him that he's now a true match. As the battles continued, Bardock fired a rebellion spear at his son. This had been a sight Raditz was very familiar with, but he knew now how to counter it. Raditz cupped his hand by his side and fired a blue blast that pushed his spear back and hit Bardock square on. But his father wasn't done instantly recovering and flying around to kick Raditz down. But Raditz responded quickly, spinning back and grabbing Bardock's leg, slamming him to the ground. The crash created a crater in the middle of the city, as from a flash of light, Raditz was now a full-on adult once more. In the same earthling clothing Bulma gave him, he landed down by his father, who smiled up at him. His face changed from Bardock to Kakarot as he finally faded away. Raditz's heart started beating fast. He turned his head. Every Saiyan around disappeared until finally his mother was gone too. When he turned back, all he could see was Vegeta and Nappa, their eyes red with the fire of battle. They seemed larger than life. Around him, planet Vegeta engulfed by flames, changing over to a lakeside house. Kakarot's fire consuming it, but Raditz's eyes were just fixated on Nappa and Vegeta. He couldn't allow them to destroy his only family left. As Vegeta's laughter echoed, it morphs into a higher pitched one, one even more sinister. <laughs> With a sudden boom, Raditz's eyes snapped open. Now he could see the blue sky above and a familiar smile. Uncle Raditz! Raditz looked around. He was alive. Was this a gift or a curse? Either way, he realized now that he was wrong. The power Earth held. The power Kakarot showed with his friends and his son. Kakarot had always pushed himself to get stronger than he was the day before. Always improving himself. His little brother had taught him that, and now Raditz had something he cared about enough to continue proving himself, but his time was up. As he looked to see Kakarot, Raditz asked how he could be alive. Goku had given Raditz the second half of the Sensu Bean. He was in such bad shape that it looked like it wasn't going to work. Kakarot and his friends had improved a lot, and were far above where Raditz himself used to be. They could take on the Cybermen, maybe even Nappa. But Vegeta, Frieza, he had to stop this. He had to warn Kakarot and beg him to prepare. Kakarot, they're strong, and they work for an even more terrible monster. Huh? A monster? Kakarot, please, for the sake of your father and brother, defend the pride of the Saiyan race. Raditz grabbed onto Kakarot's gi tightly, begging him, tears forming on his face. Piccolo, who was standing nearby, told Goku to just end things already, but Goku ignored him. The brother duo stayed quiet. A mutual understanding was reached. There was something else out there, something much stronger than the Saiyans who were coming. Goku simply nodded at Raditz, reassuring him that he would get stronger. Goku told Raditz that he'd use the Dragon Balls, the Room of Spirit and Time, anything to assure that they would be safe, and maybe one day find the person who's responsible for all of this. Find Frieza. Raditz was thankful as he stood up and placed a hand on Gohan's head. He apologized for everything and for not having stayed long. 
He told Gohan that the Saiyan race stood behind him as his ancestors, Bardock, Gine, and himself. Gohan was confused as Raditz turned back and burst his aura open. Goku asked what the hell he was doing when Raditz turned his head to look at them one final time. He just had one question for Gohan. What was the name of the winged insect that landed on his finger? Gohan responded with Butterfly. Raditz nodded at the kid. It was a good name, so was Gohan, and so was Goku. Raditz's aura sparkled as he burst away. Piccolo was going to blast at him, but Goku stopped him. Krillin wondered where he was going, with Goku assuming that he just needed more time. Raditz wiped tears from his face as he flew, landing at his Saiyan pod location. He entered. The seat was uncomfortable. The pod was cramped, but this pod was probably the closest thing he had to a home during the years after Planet Vegeta's destruction. He clicked on a button that lit up the display, Vegeta's message still clearly visible. Raditz took a deep breath and input commands. The pod rumbled, bursting vertically up to the sky at lightning speed, reaching the atmosphere. As the pod made half a round around the curvature of the Earth, Raditz couldn't help but admire it. It was a beautiful planet. It would have been a shame for it to have just become another empty trash heap for the Frieza Force. The pod began to become hotter and hotter as it was released from the Earth's pool, continuing to its destination. It took a while, a day maybe, but the Saiyans had actually been a lot closer than Raditz expected. They were there early. The two pods came into view, radiantly glowing amongst the vastness of space. Even in the stasis state, the Saiyans commanded an incredible presence. He could sense their key now. Vegeta was terrifying. Raditz took a deep breath, thinking of the family he just left behind, the family he had lost. He then thought of Vegeta and Nappa. <laughs> Not much longer before this planet's ours. It would have been ours much sooner if you'd actually done your job, Raditz. Uh, sorry. And that's why everyone calls you Raditz the Runt. Mark my words, if you screw up again, I will kill you. Wait, I just remembered something. I think my little brother Kakarot was sent to a different planet. I'll bet he's still there. The fact that he's your brother doesn't exactly fill me with confidence. What planet was he sent to? Uh, I think it's called Earth. Those thoughts disappeared along with Raditz himself as the Saiyan pods collided with Vegeta and Nappa. Exploding upon impact, Raditz had known that even if they did survive the crash, none of them could survive in the vacuum of space. The giant fireball made no sound, no one saw it, no one felt it. The Saiyan race was truly gone as far as Raditz knew, only living on through his brother and nephew. Perhaps they were free now more than ever. Now, no Saiyan lived under Frieza's rule. Just like his father before him, Raditz left all of his hope on Kakarot's shoulders. The final sight in Raditz's eternal dream being one of Kakarot standing before Frieza on a lush green planet. A vision which quickly faded away. Raditz was dead, and so was the prince and his companion. Perhaps this was the last expression of the love Raditz felt for his younger brother. Only Raditz knows for sure. Kakarot, don't die. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed Fateful Brothers, the story of when Raditz lost his memories. This was one of my favorite stories to do, adapting the tale from Budokai Tenkaichi 2. From what I've seen online, it's probably one of the most popular official Dragon Ball what ifs out there. So I hope I did it justice, I've always wanted to adapt this one and I'm glad I finally got to it. This one was edited by Chris Diaz and myself, with the thumbnail done by Junior Sama. Writing Raditz was so much fun and I think I really want to write a story of my own involving Raditz coming back. Or turning good, something like that sometime soon. I know it's a bittersweet ending, but I also think it's one of the most powerful endings any of the Dragon Ball games have given a story. So I wanted to make sure I left it intact, besides a few additions here and there. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. And remember the question at the start, what would you do if you lost your memories? As always, a huge thank you to the patrons of the channel. As always, a thank you to the patrons and members of the channel. Raphael Terran, Jay Johnson, K. McKnight, Garuv, Awasti, The Shadows, SFM Heck, Indigo Saturn 64, Earth Dragon, Gerald Smith, 
Baby Yoda, Jake King, Dalen Kemmer, Softer Cat, Arvin Selman, Faffing About, Kitsune Jester, Kaiju Monarch, Shadow Paradox, Eric Jenkins, Evan Webb Stewart, Lost Saiyan 997, Orange Crimsicle, Chris Macareno, Mao Lick, Daddy, Cyber Samurai, Ryan Wilpula, BC Man 420, Akko, D Man for Life, Blaze 9526, Craze PlayStation CK, Free Flow Highway, Jamie Pollard, Mystic Angel, Shane Ke, True Lightning Striker, Ghost 1571, Trent Rolls, D Man Plays 22, Jim G, Jerome Foster, Keith Grimes, Dreadpool, Samuel Randall, James Bracebridge, 200 Days to Get Shredded, Fu, Ryan Rotert, Undertaker Jesus, Seaward Chimp 89, Jesse Ford, Christian Hillman, Nuka Draco, Lewis Perkins, Hannah Rowan, Ryuzaki, and Jonathan Way. Thank you guys for supporting the channel as all of it goes directly into the videos you enjoy. Anyways, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, especially with friends who like Dragon Ball, and until we meet again, see ya!